Hello Moon Knight fans, thanks so much for clicking on this video, my name is Chris, episode 5 of Moon Knight has now officially been released, entitled Asylum. And I know people love to say this after every single Marvel episode, but I truly mean it here, this is like the best episode of Moon Knight right now. I think this episode had so much heartbreaking moments, tons of character development for Oscar Isaac's Moon Knight, and really showed a darker side of the MCU that didn't require gritty visuals. Like yeah, the Punisher and the Daredevil Netflix series I think still hold that bar for like really graphic Marvel content, but this right here psychologically and mentally was like really straining. I'm loving what Marvel did in this episode, so what I'm going to do here for you guys is giving you my my Moon Knight episode 5 spoiler review. I'll be pointing out little Easter eggs here and there that you might have missed, theorizing to what the finale can be since we only got one episode. But I'm also need your guys' reaction on Moon Knight episode 5. What did you think of this episode? Are you on board? Do you think they can nail the landing with one episode? The sad part is, this is said to be a limited series, meaning this will just be a one and done. Next time we see Moon Knight, it'll be in another spin off TV series, maybe Midnight Suns or in a movie appearance. Doesn't look like he'll get a season two, so I'm like, Episode 1 better be 3 hours long. But okay, diving into the beginning of Episode 5 of Moon Knight here, we pick up where we left off with Steven and Grant having encountered the hippo, Tort, where their screams immediately cut us to Oscar Isaac back in the chair in front of Dr. Harrow, only this time he appears physically bruised up like he just went through a battle, even as far as wearing a bandage on his nose. This is actually a really great callback to the Moon Knight Jeff Lemire run that has had heavily inspiration on these last couple of Asylum episodes. Throughout the entire time there, Mark can be seen wearing a bandage on his nose so it's kind of cool that they put it on here but you gotta admit it messes with our mind time wise because in other sections of this episode he will not have any of these bruises or that bandage on his nose heck if you want to already start diving into theories people are wondering if this is actually jake lockley that we're staring at right now people are pointing out that oscar isaac's accent is a little different in here a little bit more new york and rough he also seems very quick to attack and go after someone and that feels like what we've known the jake lockley persona to be at least the MCU version. I feel really great. I mean, they must pay you a lot of money in, in this place. You know You're what? really good. I tell you what, I feel like a million dollars. Never felt so good. But either way, this alternate personality of Mark Spector quickly gets sedated and we jump back into Steven and Mark meeting up with the hippo. Now, this is actually what I want to talk about. I'm actually really glad they're doing this. One of the things that disappointed me about the previous episode and why I was kind of like on the fence of how this was going to work. One of the reasons the Jeff Lemire Moon Knight run was so well done is because it actually made you think, is Moon Knight crazy? Where all of his adventures made up, none of it really happened, and he was just a mental patient in an asylum. With the last episode, it felt like they didn't even try to play up that mystery on whether Moon Knight was crazy, because immediately he's going into rooms and then meeting other versions of himself right in front of him, so it's like, oh, of course this isn't happening in the real world, because how do you just meet another version of yourself? You can't do that, huh? No. Okay, that doesn't count. But now what they're doing in this episode where they're jumping back and forth from what's basically inside Mark's mind to then jumping back into therapy sessions with Dr. Harrow, now they're playing up that fact of like, oh my God, is this actually even happening? Is he a mental patient? But going on here, Tor does explain that they are in the do it, which basically is the afterlife and what they're currently in is what their mind has constructed to kind of hold in all their memories and past events, which I think only further feeds into the thought that maybe Mark is crazy in an asylum because why else would that be the thing his mind pictures if it's not something he's been in most of his life it's also worth pointing out that they even mention here the astral plane which is the afterlife that we saw in black panther this is just something that the mcu is now confirming that basically all religions and versions of the afterlife exist in this world we have the do it the astral plane i'm sure there's heaven and hell like for christians even in thor love and thunder they have confirmed norse mythology with those gods and greek mythology with us going to Mount Olympus. So in the MCU, everything is canon. But we find out that Mark and Steven are stuck in this temporal plane until their scales can be balanced, granting them access to the fields of reeds, paradise, and if their scales are not balanced, instead having to fall overboard onto the sand, becoming frozen in time. Here's where Mark and Steven then go off on a journey to try and see if they can balance their scales. Part of me was wondering if the reason the scales aren't balancing for them is because they're missing another heart, the Jake Lockley heart. Heck, even when Tort was over here explaining that they need to go back into those rooms and figure out how to balance their scales, I was like, oh, they're gonna bring out Jake Lockley and the boy's still stuck in a coffin just begging for his life. Let me in. Let me in, please. 
So Steven and Mark then find themselves on this journey to go ahead and balance their skills where we see events that have happened in previous episodes like the first time we got to see him turn into Moon Knight or the night that Khonshu went ahead and turned back the stars even hinting to a very tragic backstory that we'll get into later in this episode. But one of the rooms that they do find themselves in is of all the people that Mark has killed in his mercenary days. This was kind of an interesting way to kind of play that up and we even get to see some of the demons that Mark has to deal with saying that he remembers every single one of them going as far as to mention where he killed them it's even kind of crazy that they mentioned the word predator i still have this mindset that i'm watching this on disney plus through disney and just to see that i'm like all right however steven in the middle of this does look off to the side and see a little kid where he runs after him leading us into the childhood of mark specter all of this door jumping and whatnot where we're going into different memories is directly pulled out of the jeff lemire moon knight run because in that comic the same situation happens the asylum is actually kind of like a prism for his mind and we see his personalities go through different doors and adventures. In the comic version where Stephen Grant was a millionaire, we see him on the set of a Moon Knight movie. We even see a version of his personality that's an astronaut on the moon fighting werewolves. So it's kind of really cool to see the MCU do their own version here and I think it's working out for the best with what they've set up here because this leads to some like very tragic backstory. So not only do we get to meet the mom of Mark Spector, we also find out that he had a brother. If you notice here with the brother, he's actually going ahead and coloring a fish with a smaller fin, kind of hinting to the fish that he'll have later on in life life even at one point when he's walking away with his brother to go cave diving he mutters the words later gators and even as we get closer to the cave we do see the remains of a bird that very much resemble conchu this even kind of looks like the drawing that we saw at the beginning of the asylum just really messing with our minds trying to wonder is this a real memory is it a fabricated one and the only reason i say that is because if you've read the jeff lemire run you find out by the end of that series that it was actually conchu who created this whole situation and false idea that another god was going to take over the world. Kind of like what we're seeing here in the MCU. Khonshu has been telling us that Amit and Harold are trying to take over the world. But really, it was just Khonshu kind of messing with Mark, breaking his mind so that he could take over his body. I don't think the MCU will really do that where Khonshu's revealed to be the bad guy. But you gotta admit, it's kind of weird to have some Khonshu imagery years before he's supposed to meet him. But sadly, it does get revealed through an accident that Mark's brother died, leading to a very traumatic childhood where the mother decides to shun out Mark. And this was just like heartbreaking to see especially as we're going through the different birthdays that mark starts to go through in his life and you just see his mother turn into an alcoholic and then eventually into abusing him it was just something i wasn't expecting to see at all in a moon knight series and even just the realization that stephen grant goes through to find out why he was created that he's not a real person i also just want to take this moment to like again just continuously praise oscar isaac the man deserves an emmy or any kind of award you can give this dude because he's basically acting against himself so it means for a lot of the times he's just talking to a shadow that's not there but i really just felt bad for steven finding out that his mother had been dead the entire time even though at the beginning of the series we saw him getting postcards from her talking to her on the phone when she was never really there and it was just mark creating this happy version of himself that he can escape to again it's not disney being physically graphic or violent but mentally straining here and just provoking your thoughts in a way i really was not expecting through another one of the doors though we do finally get to see the origin of mark specter and the day he became moon knight taking a look at his mission in egypt where we even see layla's father dead on the ground to where he crawled away to the temple that conchu was in very much pulled from the lemire comics conversating with conchu and becoming moon knight it's kind of interesting that in these moments stephen graham points out the fact that conchu had been manipulating mark from that very moment which again it's like make me wonder will they make conchu the ultimate bad guy at the end will it be revealed that he just manipulated mark into the situation and there was never really any danger and he just wanted his body but before we can live in that moment we cut back to them on the boat headed to the gates leading back into our world sadly their scales had not balanced enough yet leading to the people of the sands wanting to take them down i do like how in this moment we start to get those little hints that Stephen grant that personality will start to be more physically active we know he's a person that doesn't like violence but when he transforms into mr knight we want want him to kick some butt and we're starting to get little hints of that here unfortunately though it does cost steven his life with ending up on the sand frozen triggering the scales to balance and allowing mark to be sent off to the fields of reeds aka paradise essentially ending up in heaven ending the episode right there really so much to take in and me just left wondering 
what's gonna happen now? Because basically what this means is Mark is now 100% dead and he's in the afterlife. Also, what's gonna happen to Stephen Grant? He's stuck down there and essentially what's their version of hell is his personality frozen and if he ever gets out of there, can he turn into Mr. Knight or Stephen Grant? Also, if he's basically dead in the real world, what's Layla doing right now? Is she with Dr. Harrow? Is she trying to stop him? Does she know she has to go free Conchu? Also then, if he's dead right here, then what was going on with those sessions with Dr. Harrow? Was any of that actually happening? Happening. This is what I mean where Marvel really likes to save all the answers to the questions till the final episode and are just gonna cram it into one big finale that I hope works out. If not, it's gonna be fumbly messy and it's gonna leave a sour note on what so far has been an amazing show. So we'll all find out what happens in the final episode, but I want to throw it off to you guys. You see episode 5 of Moon Knight. What do you think could be happening in the finale? Do you think they could stick the landing? Anything and everything, be sure to like, subscribe, follow me on Twitter at 3C Films or on TikTok at 3C Films. But as always, I'm Chris. Take care.